if I put you in charge of not just that one reserve in Bilalia, but instead, uh, instead I put you in charge of the whole protected areas system in Bilalia. You do an analysis for birds and you do an, al an analysis for nymphalid butterflies. If you get different patterns, you better go out and get some more taxa to analyze. But if you do several taxa and you see, see the same pattern over and over again, you start to be confident that you're getting the pattern. Okay? Certainly, obviously, careful consideration of information gaps and their effects on results. That's a little bit obvious. You pay attention to what you know and what you don't know. But I think this final point is actually the most important one. If we sit around and wait too long, it's too late. So much better. We will have to rely on indicator taxa of some sort to some degree if we want to get anything done. Okay? So it's a necessary evil of this process. None of us likes it, but in the most optimistic sense right now, I'll probably get somebody angry at me with this, but in the most optimistic sense right now, you can work with vertebrates, maybe some butterfly families, and plants. And they're really, except for some region that has some intensive survey for some other group, that's really it. Okay? So it's a necessary evil. Lee? How did you know I wanted to say anything? Because you looked up and pursed uh, your lips. Well, <laughs> so I was just thinking there would be only two things I would add to that, I think. Um, hopefully does well. Maybe it hopefully does engender a, a debate okay. at the end of the day. Um, but I would say that um, you want to prioritize using endemic species, not richness. I think sure. that's probably sure. not controversial. Um, and that as you prioritize using endemicity, uh, it works reasonably well at coarse scale, at sort of global or continental scales. Uh, but as you get finer and finer scale, it works more and more poorly. And um, that's kind of the world we're in. So we know in very gross form that tropical mountains and tropical islands are the world's highest conservation priorities. Um, but where exactly to work within those areas becomes very difficult because you can't use one taxa very well as a surrogate for others at fine scale. And we don't have the data. Mm -hmm. So if you're in charge of, of designing the protected areas network for Bilalia, you probably can make some first guesses at that continental, regional, national level. But at some point you're going to have to go back to that international conservation organization and say, well, we really need you to finance intensive surveys to get at more taxa beyond our indicator taxon uh, to get at these 30 regions that have never been surveyed, et cetera, et cetera. Wherever the money comes from, as, as Lee said, if you go to finer and finer resolutions, there comes a point where there's not enough information to get fine enough to do the conservation right. And so you're going to have to get out into the field to do this right at the end of the day. So that might suggest one thing to add to your list of solutions there, which would be understanding the drivers of endemism. So if we don't empirically understand where the endemism is, if we could understand the processes that create endemism, that would help tremendously as well. Yeah, very good point. Any other questions? When's dinner? <laughs> I think I see a question from Kumar. That's a uh, really very good point <coughs> that we learned that uh, still we don't have uh, comprehensive uh, data and information on global biodiversity. So in the absence of such information that we are 
declaring or assigning species as an indicator or keystone or umbrella. So uh, we can appreciate the knowledge gap uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, in order to be able to design effective uh, conservation plan. Yeah. Uh, this is one point uh, which I picked it, uh, but uh, what are the criteria even to assign those uh, indicator species or just to say this is a keystone species or just ah. and then what are this to say just or assign elephant is an umbrella species. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just use this uh, terminology, but what, what, what is technical but you notice that I didn't put a lot of emphasis on that slide oh, okay. um, keystone species to establish that I think you need you, you need to see detailed ecological studies that really establish that you know yes this is a species that serves a unique role you know how do you test that well probably you remove the species from the ecosystem and see what happens you know my my mental image of a keystone species is our beaver which is a really fascinating species because they spend all their time building dams on little creeks and so they create these marshy boggy swampy um, parts of forests that otherwise would have a fast-flowing stream and they really engineer an entire ecosystem okay but that's a very well studied species and so if, if we want to come to that sort of conclusion here in Ethiopia, we might have to wait until detailed studies get done. I think for th this particular purpose, that of conservation planning, it's more a question of for what taxon do we have good, detailed, high quality data available in good density. So, you know, Lee gave a great example with, with the South African plants, where the Protea Project and others have just assembled these amazing data sets that document plant diversity across the country, and especially in that Cape region. Um, that's an opportunity. Doesn't have anything to do with the role of the species in the community or anything like that. It's just saying there's an incredible amount of data there, okay? Um, so I think frequently, again, it's going to be vertebrates, maybe some butterflies, and plants. Now what do we do about the data? My view of it is we fill the gaps in the well-known taxa. We pick out some candidate taxa that could be brought up to the level of well-known. And then we also look to the essentially the poorest of the poor in terms of knowledge. And those taxa, we try to bring them up into the category of some knowledge. Okay, but it's a long process. Yeah. Emily, hold on one sec. This is a comment. Uh-huh. Speak that, loud. Um, in relation to data, I think uh, a lot of what you say, a lot, uh, data in Africa is sometimes two steps away from being one or one step. And um, we find that, for example, at the National Museums, the invertebrate data, we have so many specimens. And yet, I don't think we've digitized 10,000 specimens. So a lot of Africa, that applies. And so I think it is about mobilization of the data, not really going back to the field. So I think I would agree and disagree which is to say certainly mobilizing the data is crucial and it's the easiest way to build these information resources which is to say you know what I showed you for nymphalid butterflies if specimens or even digital data already exist and can simply be mobilized without going out into the field wonderful but specialists with each of these taxa including people in this room, can tell you pretty quickly, oh, yeah, but there are no collections from that mountain range. Or there are no modern collections 
from this country, or there are no existing tissue collections from this region. Um, so I, I wouldn't make the, the jump in logic that there exist a lot of specimens, so don't go out in the field. I would say do both. And many times, it's different people who do those things. No, I'm just comparing the, the amount of investment that you have to make to go to the field vis a vis what you, you know, mobilizing with the soil. I think we should initially focus on getting out what we have because even the data that is digital is not yet available online. Okay, I agree with everything you said except the word initially because the field people should be out in the field and the data people should be working on data. And one doesn't have to wait on the other. Now, of course, ideally, the field people will take the state of knowledge at the moment and they will pick their field sites optimally for that moment, okay? But I don't think we have time to wait. Some of the places that, that I worked 10, 20, 30 years ago no longer exist. My first tropical expedition as a beginning graduate student was to the southwestern Amazon in the state of Rondonia in Brazil. And it was more than 100 kilometers of intact virgin rainforest flying by plane, 125 kilometers, you saw nothing but virgin rainforest as far as you could see in any direction. I made the mistake of looking at that site on Google Earth recently. And literally, one half of our site is completely gone. From you know, the west up to the river, gone. The, after the river, patches. So I don't think that we have the luxury of waiting for the information to catch up before we go out into the field. But to go out in the field, we should make the best use of what information we have. Unfortunately, in Africa, a lot of you know, the same people in the field are the ones who are supposed to make the data available. So, I mean, it's just a have to balance. That, yeah, that, that's a, a, a reality check. Of course, many of those people who work with both field and data, in their hearts they really want to be out in the field, right? So give them a little bit of break from the data and give them a, a reward. Last question. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I saw the nine major taxa identified not to determine uh, richness index, but... Uh, for North America. As, as that's for North America. So yeah. I didn't see fish. Uh, I think that was about what data sets could they get and could they use to calculate species richness for each of the ecoregions in North America. So even that study, even in the US and Canada, was limited, okay? Um, it's, I mean, every, every study I've done in terms of you know, multi-taxon biodiversity, you always see these gaps. You know? And sometimes it's, you know, the fish of one country are really well known and the fish of the next country are poorly known. Um, sometimes it's, you know, it's, it's geography by taxon interactions. Sometimes it's just one taxon or one country, one region. But gaps are the reality as far as biodiversity data goes.